think no matter what game you play seriously or competitively, what, whether it's like Valorant to Street Fighter to even speedrunning, right? That's a competitive thing. At some point, you probably said to yourself, man, I hate this game. I can't tell you how many uh, League of Legends lobbies I've been in or Discord calls while we're playing League. And mid-game, somebody says, I hate this game. I don't know why I play it. I don't even know why I queued up. And some of the times, that's me, and sometimes it's other people. But after every single game, we click play again, and we silently queue up, and nobody says anything. <laughs> we just don't acknowledge it. And that's kind of how Tilt starts. It's not quite anger, but it's not completely foreign to being angry. I think anger is more of like a short-term outburst that can sometimes fuel people, right? Some people lose the first game of a set in, in a tournament or something, and they get angry, and they go back to character select screen, and they think about it, and, and they get that tingle, you know, you get that adrenaline dump in your head, and they're just sitting there seething, but that's what fuels them to win the set. It, it really makes you focus in, because that adrenaline rush helps you, it clears your mind a little bit. And other times, it's just people throwing sticks and getting angry and screaming, right? It's different for everybody, but the, the main thing is that I think it's a very short and succinct outburst. Well, Tilt kind of happens over time, and there isn't really a end, you know? You can keep playing ranked or whatever you're playing that's making you angry for an infinite amount of time. I I've had friends where I've gone to bed and they're Diamond 1 on League of Legends, and I wake up the next day and they're D3, D4. And it's like, how <laughs> how did this happen? That is till. It just happens over time and you have to be the one to put a, put an end to it, right? An angry outburst can end with a broken stick or some harsh words while, uh, you know, a long session of tilt ends with you eating McDonald's at 1 a.m. at your desk just thinking about your life. It, it's two completely different things. I think it's because there's just so many different layers and stages of tilt to where it just breaks you down as a person over time, to be completely honest with you. It starts with like one loss where you, you tell yourself, oh man, we lost that game, but next game will be better. And then you lose that game. And then you can't stop thinking about those last two games in the third game even though you want to and then it just is a continual beat down of your character and the answer is always to just stop playing right usually uh, i have what i call the tree rule i have a friend named tree and every time we play league if we lose two games in a row he's out he he's done he said that's it we lost two games we need to stop but for some people if you're like me or, or like some of my other friends it's not as easy as that because you feel like you should be playing better and you can play better so you want to prove it to yourself. You don't want to prove it to anybody else because if you wanted to prove it to anybody else, you'd just get off when they got off. But some people don't. Some people will solo queue after everybody's already gotten off because they need to prove it to themselves that they are better than this, that they can play better than this. And this is when it really just comes tumbling down. Like you're just uh, have a spiral. It's just a spiral trajectory <laughs> downwards where you're just playing all day and all night trying to get back to quote unquote where you were but you can't forget about all the losses that you've had in this play session. No matter how long the play session has been, you know, those things just weigh on you. And then you, you kind of get to the point where maybe you do win a game, maybe you do take a game or two, but it, it's empty. It's an empty victory. You don't feel anything from it because of how much you lost. It's very similar to the, the five stages of grief. Um, if you ever learned that in psychology, denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance, except you're kind of just grieving over some points on the internet. And and that's when you, you order the McDonald's and you sit at your desk and you think about your life. It's like, how fucking angry am I getting over playing ranked, you know? There's nothing really rational about it. It's just so funny to me that, like, we can understand it as people who play games seriously or, like, competitively or used to. Like, if I was watching this video back and it was somebody completely different who made it, I, I feel like I would still be able to understand everything that I talked about today, <laughs> even though it's such an insane just concept. It's just funny to think about the, the fact that you can feel stages of grief over losing in a video game. That That's how much we care about it, and I think there's something funny but there's also something pretty cool about that there's an element of uh, of passion to it i guess you could say if i if i were to put it more eloquently <laughs> then we're just grieving over points i think the big thing though that you have to remember when you're you kind of feeling like that or you're going through tilt uh is one you know get off the game first of all if, if you're conscious enough to say to yourself i'm tilted then you're probably conscious enough to just get off the game. But the other thing is that you have to remind yourself of your goals a lot of the time. Um, and remember that this is online. It, this is more for fighting game players, but because uh, there's such a big offline scene for fighting games still, and that's where the main competition happens. You just have to remind yourself that online is practice in every sense of the word. Well, it doesn't matter if you kill for ranked or casual or you're playing battle lounges. It's all practice because offline is really the results that I personally value and that a lot of people value. And that's because it's just the uh, best competitive environment. You know, there's, there's the less latency and you can play with the people next to you. It's not uh, 
uh, it doesn't have as many variables as online has. So if your goals are kind of like mine, where you want to win offline and you want to win where it, it really matters, then online it really has to be practice for you, no matter how hard it is to remind yourself of that sometimes. <laughs> like especially when it's laggy or like maybe you're about to get a new shiny ranked badge and, <laughs> and you, you want to rank up or whatever. You, you've seen me obsess over that kind of stuff on this channel in the past if you've been here for a while. I still do. I, I do still get a little bit proud when I when I get a new rank up, but it doesn't weigh as heavily on me anymore because uh, mostly because of Texas Showdown, right? Like going to a big event like that, you realize how much you want to win and how good you want to be when you're surrounded by a room of people who are also like pretty good like there's some really good players there that you want to be and you want to play on the stage and you want to uh, like win things you have to train and you have to control your tilt and control your anger and really focus on getting better it's kind of like offline and competing is a reward for training and putting up with <laughs> some of the stuff you have to put up with when you play online and i think that's why offline uh, results are weighed so heavily because you you really get to see how much work people have been putting in on their own uh, when you come to to an offline event. Uh, but yeah, I think that's gonna be it for me today. If you guys enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and uh, I'll talk to you again soon. Thanks so much.